What's good, Josh? Bo Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out a wrestling news related video by Wrestling Hub. And uh, when you guys had told me to check out the channel, so I'm definitely gonna check it out. Uh, this video is titled AEW Stars to WWE. Tony Khan responds, Seth Rollins apologizes, Matt Riddle hit old woman. I, what is going on here? I don't know. This is going to be interesting, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Let's see what Wrestling Hub has with the wrestling news and uh, see what's going on here. Let's do this. With former WWE stars considering a return now that Triple H is head of creative and more, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for July 27th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with what they talking about, the man. I may be wrestling. checking out some also, more of don't forget his videos if y'all want me to. At Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. Speaking to Superstar Crossover, Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair revealed a humiliating moment she had in WWE thanks to her husband playing a prank on her. The only other embarrassing moment I've had is my husband Montez Ford trying to rib me when I first got to the main roster. I was talking about the Usos, and I said something about them being twins. He said, they're not twins. What? No, they're not twins. Really? They look just alike. That's crazy. I was in the locker room one day training and I was like, I can't believe the Usos are twins. They looked at me like, what are you talking about? They are <laughs> twins. I'm like, my husband told me me they weren't twins it was probably a couple of months i was so adamant no they're not they're not twins what are you talking about yes they are okay never mind i go to my husband and i'm like why did you tell me that i don't know i was just messing with you i actually <laughs> said it out loud in front of people that's, that's messed up no they're not twins they just look alike oh i thought y'all was i didn't know y'all weren't twins you are twins you talking about hey man hold on Montez. <laughs> That's funny, man. With sports, Gita Liv Morgan talked about becoming SmackDown Women's Champion after cashing in Money in the Bank, where she noted she hopes more younger stars continue to receive these opportunities. Hopefully so. I really do hope so, because I read something on the internet a couple of days ago. I don't know if it's true or not, but I'm the first WWE superstar over the last four years to win the SmackDown Women's Championship that wasn't a four-horse woman or Ronda Rousey. One, mm. I think that's unbelievable, and I'm so proud to have it be me, but hope that trend is something that can mm, continue interesting. You know, to have newer talents fight for these opportunities opportunities because we have such an incredible women's roster i want to defend my championship against anyone that wants to fight for it i hope this is the start of wwe highlighting and featuring more talent man, I, hey man if someone can fact check that if that's the case damn that's crazy they've been pushing the same four women since they left the nxt so wow man i don't know if she's gonna uh retain against ronda but that's yeah, summer something this week but we'll see this weekend. Well, you sure about that, Rick? <laughs> you sure about that? Promoting his final match on July 31st for StarCast, Ric Flair made it clear that this will be his last bout, telling Chris Van Vliet, it has to be my last match. I get that question asked a lot, but it has to be. Even if I do well, I can't go back on my word to the people that have right. given me all this respect, time, and bought tickets. Right. I've been offered 10 matches at 50 grand a piece, and I think in Europe someone offered me 100 grand. But Damn. this will be the last one. I can manage somebody and be in the ring, but it will be my last match. All right. Okay, Rick. We'll see, bro. Even though I think you should probably hang it, should still stay hang retired, but hey, do what you do. It's fucking Ric Flair. He gonna do what he do. I don't. I don't think he should be out there, but he gonna do what he do. We'll see if this truly will be his last match. You know how that goes. Flair also gave his reaction to Vince McMahon retiring from WWE. I wasn't happy about it at all. I love Vince McMahon. I don't know what he is doing right now, but I feel like he will have a hard time. He will adjust, obviously, but he loved the business, and he made us all who we are, from Hulk to everybody. I don't care what everybody else thinks, he made us, and I have nothing but respect for him. He is a majority stockholder. I don't know if he will stay away or not. He's a genius. Now he's uh people have been praising Vince McMahon, you know, over the past few days. And I will never take anything for what he's done for the business. I don't think anyone can. But at the same time, we can't just sit up here and act like he hasn't been out of touch for all these years. And of course, the timing of him retiring is no coincidence. There's a lot of stuff that's coming out 
about his, you know, his the things he's been spending extra funds on, hush money. And apparently now there's another report that the money that he was spending was potentially company money. So I, I don't know what's going on, but the timing is no coincidence. He probably had to step down. He probably had to just walk away from this because it's just not looking too good on paper. You know, it just seems like it's getting worse and worse with more reports coming out. Alleged reports. So I don't know, but him retiring, in my opinion, I know people may disagree. I think this may be something better for the future of WWE. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like they're trying to at some point sell WWE. It's kind of hard to sell it or make one of people buy it when the owner and CEO is under some, you know, it's in some hot water. So I don't know. We'll see where things go in the future. But I'm very optimistic to see how they move forward with the booking of all the shows. Talking to Sports Skeet ahead of his match against Pat McAfee at SummerSlam Happy, Corbin touched on how long he plans to continue wrestling and what he wants to do after. I made some good buddies in the Food Network world. Chef oh, wow. is one of my good buddies. He's always on Guy's Grocery Games. I want to have another 5 or 10 years here in WWE, but eventually, like all athletes at some point, our body doesn't keep up with our minds anymore. We may think we can go, and I want to be a guy who withdraws at the appropriate time. I don't want to be there too long. I don't want to jeopardize because I feel like I've got good stigmas about me other than everybody hates me but ha! i'm good in the ring i'm smooth i have a creative move set i make things look as violent as possible and those kinds of things so i don't want to be a step behind my mind physically so i think you know in the next five or ten years i'll probably have reached that point and then i definitely want to get into that food world whether it's food network or it's my own youtube stuff or you know my buddy aaron does a lot of stuff where he's a guest where he's a celebrity sponsored cook you know we were talking about doing the food and wine festival together in Connecticut because we're going to go out there for WWE and raise some good money for Connor's Cure. So I'm going to cook out there. So there's a lot of really cool opportunities that food will bring when I'm done throwing people like Pat McAfee around in a ring. <laughs> I will say this about Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin's moveset is actually pretty cool. It's very smooth. He's not bad in the ring at all. Um, I just, even though the feud he has with McAfee it's not bad. It's in my opinion, I think it's better than what he had with the happy uh with uh Mad Cat Moss. I think it's much better. Um I just feel like he needs to be in that really good feud that will really get him over even more as a heel. And maybe Pat McAfee is the start, you know, to that to that whole trend of him having being a good uh a good bad guy to someone else. You know what I'm saying? I think Corbin only works as a heel. People love to hate him. So if you can find that very good, good guy, the face outside of like, you know, Pat McAfee, somebody that can really go back and forth with him, you may be able to get something, you know, uh, a really good feud out of it. So. Oh, wow. During an interview with OutKick360, Matt Riddle talked about his signature entrance in WWE where he kicks his flip-flops off his feet into yeah. the crowd. He recalled an incident that went wrong, saying, One time this was back when I was still in NXT. We were doing a house show, so the guardrails are a little closer to the ring. I kicked off the flops, and usually they go over the top and float down. But for some reason, the left foot flew off sooner and it kind of darted out the bottom rope and middle rope in between them. There was an elderly woman sitting front row and it cracked her right in the face and broke her glasses. Damn. It was so bad because she couldn't see the match and I broke her glasses. Usually security, they take my flip-flops from the fans. I get them back because they're hard to come by. The same with <laughs> John Cena sweatband. They're premium flops. What? Flops cracked an elderly lady, broke her glasses. She was a good sport about it, and I let her keep the flip-flops. You want to keep them? I'm so sorry. She kept them. I brought the action to the outside, gave the guys some hits in front of her, get her into the action. I felt bad. That's the worst one I've seen in person. What the hell? Premium flip-flops. Uh, all right, bro. You can go to Walmart and get you goddamn flip-flops. Uh, I also heard that apparently he's uh, he will not be in the match against Seth Rollins. I did see Seth Rollins send Matt Riddle to the Gulags. Oh, that was pretty crazy. I enjoyed that whole little segment. And apparently, because of the curb stomp to the steps and whatnot, he will not be, uh, I don't know if he'll be medically cleared 
to even wrestle at SummerSlam against uh, Seth Rollins. So I don't know who Seth Rollins is going to be facing this year, but it doesn't look like he will be wrestling um, um, Matt Riddle. So we'll see uh, where things go with that. But this was an interesting story. Talking to Sportskeeda about potential competitors for her in AEW, former women's champion Britt Baker made it clear that she wants to face AJ mm. Lee. I think you have to ask her that, not me. I think I would love to see AJ Lee in the ring again. She did so much for women's wrestling, and I think there's so much more that she can do, even if she doesn't know that there are so many girls that still look up to her, myself included. Now I see myself on an even playing field as her. I think I could. I feel like I could be better than AJ. So let's get in the ring and see. I'd love for her to come out of retirement. I'd love for her to be in an AEW ring. I'd love to possibly possibly have a tag match that would be quite interesting how would y'all feel about aj lee coming out of retirement joining aew with cm punk and actually going out there and wrestling for us once again let me know down below if y'all would love that i i'm i'll be all for it i think the women's division in aew it's 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 not bad, but it's still it still can be better. And I think AJ could definitely help without uh help with that as well. So wait, Jay Cargill trying to get out of, of retirement too? Speaking of AJ Lee, her husband CM Punk recently spoke to Skewed and reviewed where he revealed how his wife could come back to wrestling. Sometimes she'll be like, tell me when the girls are on. She's a big fan of Jade Cargill. Mm. I think women like Jade and Britt Baker especially, if oh. she's ever going to want to wrestle, I think they're the ones that can draw her in based on looks and ability in the work. Oh, that's crazy, man. That that would be also cool to to see her interact with Jay Cargill. And, and from what I remember, uh, AJ Lee wasn't that bad on the microphone, so I, I'm... I'm all for it if she actually decides to do that. Given the news of Vince McMahon retiring from WWE, Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan have now been named co-CEOs, and Triple H is now once again head of talent relations and the newly made head of creative, which has some former WWE stars thinking of a return. Fightful reported that one former NXT talent that had options within WWE before signing elsewhere said that they felt an incredible sense of loyalty to Triple H, mm. and if he'd been the person managing their creative future, things could have been much different. The talent and another talent that ended up in AEW said that they had no confidence in being creatively satisfied on the WWE main roster. And one said, I'm glad that I went to AEW, but if I was graduating to a Triple H led SmackDown or Raw, I probably would have re-signed with WWE mm. before my deal was up. Another top free agent that has several options that we spoke to said that both Triple H and Stephanie McMahon being in their positions greatly increases the possibility of eventually heading back to the company. We've heard from other free agents that were hopeful their previous relationships with Triple H led to them at least having conversations, but didn't expect that to happen imminently. WrestleVotes would additionally note that, with SummerSlam being his first real show in total control, Source says Triple H mm. would like to make a creative splash at the event. Oh. However, only if it's making sense. Won't just do something to do it. How about the change of pace already? I like that. I like that, man. He's going to be really controlling SummerSlam. They already have the matches booked. I'm going to be giving my uh, previews and predictions on that later on this week, so be on the lookout for that. But, uh, I like that. I really do like where, you know, where he could potentially take the company creatively, you know, and I, I, I'm interested to see what he does on the show. Um, and I can see some of the AEW talent or former WWE talent um, that were in NXT or whatnot. I can see them actually having that love for Triple H and respect for Triple H because of what they did in NXT. I can actually see that. I can actually see them like, you know what, man? If you would have been there before I left and in control, like before I left, I probably would have stayed. Because I, I do believe, and some people disagree here. Some people be like, oh, the people in NXT wouldn't have flourished the same way on the main roster in NXT. I disagree. I truly disagree. Not everybody would have gotten to the top of the car. Not everybody would have made it. But I do feel like more people than not would have been in great hands on the main roster if Triple H had full creative control. That's just my personal opinion. Let me know down below if you agree. Tony Khan on Triple H working with AEW. Hmm. 
When asked about Triple H possibly being open to WWE working with AEW in the future, AEW President Tony Khan told NBC Sports Boston, I'm not sure if that's the case, but I would certainly be open to talk with pretty much any wrestling promotion in the world about how to work together if these circumstances are right. We've worked with, I would say, in terms of securing footage or providing talent with probably a dozen companies around the world, including Ring of Honor before I was the owner when they were owned by Sinclair. I'd like to think that was positively received by them, and we did things to help them out when they were in tough times. And I think that goodwill helped us in the sale process. That is not a, a bad idea. Do y'all think maybe in a few years time or maybe even sooner, could we have a talks with AEW and WWE actually having a program, a segment like it's building up to something? I ain't going to lie to you. I would love to see that. I would love to see that only because I want these crazed fans, these WWE only fans, these AEW only fans. I want them to be able to see that you can work together and make a great product. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can like both. You can like neither. You can like one of over the other. But the 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 type of toxicness you guys be doing back and forth over a company. It's ridiculous. So I would love to see them come together. So that way these toxic individuals can be like, chill out. Like, bro, it doesn't matter. It's all wrestling. As long as we all have a good time, that's the only thing that matters. Reacting to Vince McMahon's retirement on his Hall of Fame podcast, Booker T was asked if the relationship between town and management will change as he said, you know, Vince retired, is it going to affect guys, certain guys, especially certain guys in certain positions? Yeah, heck yeah. That's because I think a lot of these guys are used to dealing with Vince McMahon directly. Mm -hmm. There's a certain comfort zone there that these guys have had with Vince. They can knock on that door and they go in there and they can actually have a conversation with him and get that wisdom, that advice from Vince. I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of guys cherish that. A lot of guys went through their whole careers having Vince be that umbrella. Yeah, I can totally understand that 100%. And not to say that, you know, it couldn't work. They can't build that rapport with Triple H. I just do believe, me personally, it was time for Vince to kind of just, you know, take a step back. It was time for him to, it was, without this whole case situation, it was time for him to step down. It had been time for him. He just creatively isn't all there anymore. That's just my personal opinion. With Vince McMahon no longer in charge of WWE, Tony Khan spoke about the possibility of AEW stars now making the jump to WWE. There are a lot of changes in pro wrestling. I think it's going to be really positive for the fans overall. I am a little amused at changes in the competition. People think it's going to magically change the landscape. Some of these accounts, Twitter can be a fun place to follow, but some of the narratives I've seen every day for the last week are really amusing to me. I've got people signed here for five years, and people think that just because the CEO, chairman, head of creative, those people changed in the competition, people I have five-year contracts with are going to magically switch teams. Good luck with that. Adam Cole is signed until 2027 now. I wouldn't expect to see him going anywhere anytime soon. Malachi Black has almost five years left on his deal. I wouldn't expect him going anywhere anytime soon. Just because these guys had some success under a previous administration somewhere else, they're not magically going to be going anywhere. Those are two people I like, just as examples of people who have worked under the previous administration. I'm very amused by that. That's a narrative I see so-called wrestling writers pushing every day. It's pretty amusing. Oh yeah, they're not going nowhere. They're, they're under contract. If you're under contract, not going anywhere. The same thing that I think is what's happening with MJF. He's under contract too. I think he's under contract until 2024. I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm correct on that. But if you're under contract, unless he lets you out the contract, which he's probably not. It does, no, he's going to keep them there, obviously. Then we won't be seeing any shifts unless someone's contract is already getting close to ending and they don't renegotiate. The same thing will happen with Cody Rose. Cody Rose contract. Was ending, he they couldn't find the uh, uh, common ground, so he left and went back to WWE. So, the IWWE right, canceled Rollins versus Riddle at SummerSlam. We talked about this earlier. When it comes to the reason why Riddle and Rollins won't be facing at SummerSlam, Fightful said WWE announced Wednesday that the match would not be taking place, citing an injury to Riddle. We're told that the injury is kayfabe. 
and there are plans to do the match down the line. Those who oh. spoke to claim it was due to creative adjustments. We're told talent wasn't for Monday, and the working plan was to have the match take place at the Clash at the Castle in September. Mm. However, with the ever-changing WWE landscape, it's quite possible that isn't final. As of now, Rollins is expected to travel to Nashville for Summer Sun Weekend and has media obligations scheduled Friday. Rollins would take to Twitter after the news broke, writing, For anyone who purchased a ticket to SummerSlam hoping to see me in action, I apologize. I did everything I could over the last six months to earn my spot on the show, but some things are out of my control. Thank you for always singing my song. They'll hear you someday. And this was your pro wrestling news mm, update. I hope you all have a great... Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. So it, it does look like they, they, they're probably switching some things up. I don't know if that... I don't, it's, it's, I don't know if that's a Triple H thing. He decides to switch it up, maybe, but they do plan on continuing the feud. And, I mean, the man storyline-wise did fucking curb stomp his head through <laughs> onto a uh, onto a uh, <laughs> steel stub. So, if you want to kind of sell that to make it seem like Seth Rollins is just out of control and he pretty much injures his opponent before the show this weekend, you can kind of do that. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe he still ends up having an opponent this uh saturday so we will see but i like this video man i like the way he structured it and i like being able to interject between each point and have my thoughts and opinions on it and the different interviews that he was able to you know relay to us and you know what people were saying and the interesting funny stories so if you guys want me to check out some more of wrestling hub man definitely i will i'm gonna subscribe to him right now y'all go subscribe to him give him a like give him a uh Give him a comment. Check out his uh, his content. If y'all want me to check out more, y'all already know. Run up the likes, and I definitely will, man. But I appreciate all the love and support on the channel, man. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.